In today's book review, we got Guided Tarot. It is all about understanding the symbolic meaning of every single tarot card and how it can relate to a certain archetype that paints a certain picture where you can relate to blank and then implement it into your life. And oftentimes we learn through symbols and stories way better than we do just like reading something straight on. That's why when you work with like a therapist, you know, they're able to ask you all these deep in-depth questions and compare it to certain things in order to solve your problems. So reading tarot is a custom blend of knowing the cards, listening to your heart and trusting your own intuition and guidance. Think of it as a communication device that connects you to the divine. You can connect at any time. It helped the author become much more aware of his or her internal or external needs by cultivating a strong connection to myself and I'm able to attract more meaningful relationships and opportunities because of it. And even in general, if you never even, you know, sit there with a pen and paper or sit there in your bedroom with just you and nothing else and actually think out all of your problems, how are you ever going to get solutions to them? It's not until you start writing things down, asking the bigger questions in life and having things like this where it describes a certain meaning where you would have seen an archetype and actually, you know, implement it into your life and see how it works. One thing Tarot does not predict or tell the future, rather Tarot offers confirmation of your intuition, which then empowers you to move forward in life in a way that speaks to your truth and aligns with your purpose. Building a responsible tarot practice means learning to ask productive questions during your reading, then using your intuition to interpret the me meanings and messages that you receive and maintaining awareness of the energy surrounding the situation. Try to remain flexible and often sometimes you might not get the answer you wanted to hear as in tarot often points to the areas that need attention in order to reach a desirable outcome. And oftentimes we like to avoid all the hard things in life and all the confrontations we have with people even if it's negative, we don't want to bring it up around someone and, you know, dive deep. That's when you see, when you call anyone out on their BS, you know, they're very reluctant to just push you away or avoid it as much as possible. Most tarot decks contain a total of 78 cards, 22 trump cards called the Major Arcana, and 56 cards called the Minor Arcana. The word arcana is derived from the Latin word arcanus, meaning secret and refers to mysterious or specialized body of knowledge that can only a select few of people possess. Major arcana have a much more significant than the minor cards. And I do think there's definitely people out there that can tell the future and the past just through the cards that having saying anything to or knowing you at all. For the past and the future has already happened, it's all interconnected and some people are definitely tapped into it more than others. Minor Arcana, 56 cards representing everyday influences of your life, although less significant than the major, than they are the threads that weave our lives together, assisting us in decisions and getting to know ourselves better. The four elemental suits that make up the minor are the cups, the wands, the swords, and the pentacles. Each of the suits contains 10 numbered cards, ace through 10, and then they have four regular ones where it's like, you know, you got the jack, queen, king, and the 10 which are called court cards. Each suit within the minor arcana also contains four court cards, much like a deck of playing cards. They represent the next level of energy within their respective suits, meaning they are considered masters of their suits and are more powerful than the numbered cards. Each court card already faced the lessons depicted in the ace through 10 cards and carry wisdom and experience with them. The page, the knight, the queen, and king all have their levels of maturity and talents, giving them more weight than the number of minor ones. Double elements of the court cards, sometimes they will represent a specific reason, a specific aspect of yourself, or an energy surrounding a certain situation. Tarot has been around for 600 years since the 1400s. In the early 1800s, tarot was starting to be used as a divination tool. Choosing your deck, whichever speaks to you, so if you go and buy, I'm pretty sure there's so many different tarot card decks, just go up to it, just like a crystal shop, and whatever you're drawn to, just come naturally, you shouldn't have to try. Purifying the deck after you buy it and before and after you're reading it with smoke incense, crystals, clear quartz, or black tourmaline, placing it on top of the deck to make sure your crystals are also purified and charged as well. That way you can clean it every time you use it. You don't just go and eat food with the same plate every day. You wash the plate in a dishwasher or you wash it yourself or have someone else wash it for you. Interview the deck and ask it questions. Pick a card from the deck and what does it mean to you? It doesn't even have, all the cards have certain meanings and stuff, but just from what you see, how does it speak to you? Don't let being a beginner psych you out from the foundation of a tarot deck is the fool who also steps into the unknown territory 
overcoming fear and judgment. We're all always starting something new. When you're a kid, all you have to do is learn new experiences. You've never really gained things or right away, unless maybe you had a past life or a guru at it. But for the most part, we're all doing new things and you always have to be the fool and willing to, you know, take your, have your ego, take a step back and allow yourself to fail. When readings go for another set of the intention of removing your personal feelings, if you're doing a reading for someone else, because if you're doing a reading for someone maybe you don't like versus someone you like, they might have two completely different things happen, you know, because we have bias. Performing a reading, steps including grounding, shuffling, cutting the deck, and laying out the cards in a pattern called a spread. Traditionally, a spread is chosen before the reading and the most popular spread being the 10 card Celtic. Uh, so there are, unless I want to say nine to 10 rules before you begin. Ground your energy before reading by doing breath work. Visualize being grounded, being connected to the earth. Two would be shuffle the deck and there is no right or wrong way. If the cards fall on the floor, let it be. Cutting the deck using your dominant hand of action. Two or three even piles and then you can stalk it back into one if you want. Then when drawing the cards, when the deck is one in one pile, use your non-dominant hand, known as the hand of intuition, to select the cards. You can spread the cards out and choose them how you like. Always use your intuition hand to pick the cards. Laying out the cards. The layout that you have in mind, you will pull cards for each position in the spread. Asking one question at a time, start off using simple spreads, three or less cards, making sure to keep all the cards face down until all questions are asked. If you see a card before asking the next question, its energy informs the following cards drawn and overrides your intuition. You can also use a significant card in your readings, specifically choose as a guide to assist in the reading, lay it face up before shuffling the deck. An example would be the lovers can be used in a spread focused on romance. Turning over the cards, there is no right or wrong way to do this. If your reading is for yourself, write down your intuitive observations in your journal or someone else that is Tell them what you're noticing without judging yourself. Interpreting the cards, notice how the cards look together. Is they a certain prevalence or a particular suit pointing to a type of energy dominant in the spread? Are the cards upright or reverse depending on the images or the orientation? The card takes on different meanings if it's upside down or take on its opposite meaning. The images or the orientation, the card takes on a different meaning and if there are any major arcana, because remember they're minor and major, if the cards were telling a story, how would it go? How do the spreads differ from the individual meaning of the cards? Try to create a narrative for the cards yourself before relying on any written descriptions. Trust the words, ideas, and the phrases that resonate with you. Cleaning the deck, thank the cards for reading it with gratitude, and then you know you can put your crystal on top of it, clear it off with incense. Storing the deck is very important. Wooden box, drawer, or cloth bag. Protecting the cards is of utmost importance. It is number one priority. Narrative readings, informing the cards all together, forming a story, reversals, a waiting period, a block to its upright meaning, internal versus external, direction of energy, use your intuition to guide your skill. Court cards, read them as the gender neutral. Pages are novences with experience that pertains to each specific suit, but they have not yet become the knight who goes out to experience the world. Number two represents the elemental speed with which events occur. Fire burns faster than water flows. The knight quest is to experience each element and attain the next level of mastery. Queens have receptive energy to their suit, nurturing and receiving at a master level that benefits themselves and others in a pure way. The kings have an active energy of their suit, taking on positions of power and leadership from experience. And do a daily reading on yourself and you'll gain experience and practice over time and get really good at it. Then we have numerology because each of the minor or each of the cards have a number on it as well. And they, when added up and reduced to a single digit, it means things in numerology, such as the individual, number one for his new beginning, two is choice, duality, partnership, three is creativity, collaboration, community, four is structure, stability, foundation, five is change, instability, loss, six is balance, choice, and harmony, seven is inspired, action, and magic, eight is infinity, success, and power, nine is alone, near completion, and ten is completion, end of the cycle. What type of questions to ask? Ask productive questions like, what can I do to be open and receptive to a healthy romantic relationship instead of, when will I meet my soulmate? 
number reading, color reading. You can also do, because there's number reading and the colors rather than just doing it straight up. And then there's so many different card spreads from having just doing one card, two card, three card, and the book, it goes over so many. And it goes over every single tarot card and the meaning and the definition and how it interprets the what specific things. And then again, you have the minor, or you have the four things, the cups representing water, the pentacles representing earth, the swords representing air, and the wands representing fire. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Other than that, it's your boy. Have a good day and deuces.